In this video, we discuss worms, trojans and viruses, and the vulnerabilities they exploit. There are many threats to networks, and one category to be aware of for your exam is that of malicious software. Now, this is a broad catch-all term that really describes any software that's been, been written with an intent to cause some kind of damage, harm, corruption, or to simply be a nuisance. For your exam, you need to know about three subcategories of malicious software, and that's worms, trojans, and viruses. We'll start with a virus. So a virus attaches itself to a host program, typically an executable. The host file has to be opened for the virus to spread, and most commonly, the virus then becomes resident in memory. From here, it can infect other uninfected files by copying itself. Other forms of viruses are often found commonly attached to spreadsheet or word processing files as macros. When you open the spreadsheet, the infection spreads to other files. Viruses are often spread through a lack of knowledge of the user. You know, for example, opening an email attachment that you believe to be safe or clicking on a link or downloading some program from an untrusted source. Now worms are very similar to viruses in design and they're often considered a subclass of viruses. There's one big difference though. A worm is able to spread without the need for human interaction. It is able to self-replicate. Now in the example we see here, the worm has created thousands of copies of itself and is automatically sending itself out to everyone in my address book via email. This means, obviously, a worm can easily be spread through lack of knowledge again and awareness, for example, opening an infected email, again, a bad link on a website you believe to be safe. They tend to easily exploit out-of-date systems where maybe few security update or patches have been done, or maybe the virus checker is out of date. The final category you need to know about for the exam is Trojans. Now, at first glance, these are programs which appear useful or genuine. Once installed, the program, however, has a hidden agenda. Trojans are often used to install or create what's known as a backdoor to your computer system. In itself, it doesn't actually cause much harm. However, this backdoor can then be exploited by a hacker with malicious intent to gain unauthorized access to your computer via ease. Some of the simplest backdoor programs allow a hacker to remotely monitor what keys you are pressing. They'll extract this information and from that analyze it and be able to work out a whole range of your passwords. Once again, Trojans typically exploit human naivety and a lack of training or understanding. Again, it tends to be users not checking the trustworthiness of software that they download or not thinking about the sort of items that they are clicking on or the sort of email attachments that they are opening.